Hello everybody, this is a delight to bring to you the Word of God on Divine Healing and this is session one, Divine Healing one as it were and my heart is to expose to you the Word of God centered around God's healing power. Salvation and healing forever go together in the Bible. The way salvation comes with a man believing in his heart and confessing with his mouth. Your tongue and your heart are eternally connected when it comes to the kingdom of God. And so salvation is what you believe in your heart and if you confess you're righteous and you're standing in the right place with God because you believe that Jesus Christ is his son and he came to earth to die for our sins, to remove the wrath of God, to deflect the, 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 the wrath of his anger against those who have rebelled against him. And he brings about what sin is and reverses it into relationship. Sin is unbelief in the Word of God. That's what happened in the Garden of Eden, is unbelief in the Word of God, which caused man to walk away from truth and to believe a lie and to serve a creature rather than the Creator Himself. Jesus comes back and introduces the Father, His Father, His relationship with His Dad, is an indication is that he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So everything I say and do is what he has said and done. And so he's the living epitome of the word and the flesh upon the world to demonstrate the loving kindness and the mercy and compassion of his Father towards us. Healing is a demonstration of his compassion. Compassion and mercy are used interchangeably in the Bible, meaning the same thing. It is complete together. And so when it comes to that, uh, it, it, healing is very similar. But healing, because it's a personal issue where people feel the pain and they feel the suffering, they have a lot of questions because it is a felt thing. Salvation is a future thing that you can only obtain by faith, knowing his unconditional love towards us and the hope of the future is the confident expectation of goodness that is hope faith is trusting his word and so when it comes to divine healing one of the first scriptures i want to bring to us and just touch on that as we go into more depth is the foundation of divine healing is found in exodus 15 and 26 because here we know that the tribe of Israel is on the move out of bondage and slavery because they have had Passover. The blood has been placed on the door of the lintel from the house that they were inside. So the blood deviates and deflects the angel of death as a sign of what uh, of, of the salvation. But inside each home, a lamb was eaten. So there you have the blood and the flesh, the word of God, the lamb of God, Jesus himself, and they devoured the flesh. And as a result of that, he, it says he led the Israelites out. They carried silver and gold and all of them were healthy and strong. Psalm 105 and verse 37. The Bible says there was not one feeble among them. So all the cripples were healed, all the blind were healed, the deaf, the palsy, the epileptic, everyone walked out as a whole person into something good. And they went through the Red Sea. So right there you've got three of the doctrinal foundations of Hebrews 6. Repentance from dead works, faith towards God, trusting his word, trusting what Moses said by, by being in a house overnight, and Passover happened. Then walking out of that bondage and slavery and that mentality of lockdown, as it were, into a freedom, passing through the Red Sea, which is the third one. Is okay, so you've got the blood salvation, eating the lamb, eating the lamb completely, it's the word of God, flesh, healing. Thirdly, going through the Red Sea, baptism. Now they're walking in the wilderness, fourthly, being led by the Spirit of God. But here they come to a place where they are thirsty. And of course, it's a natural phenomena to bringing about a scriptural truth. So, in Exodus 15, 26, we read this. And he said, if you will give a t earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I put on the Egyptians, for I, the Lord, 
am your healer. There he is. He was, I am to Moses, but he's, I am the Lord your healer to the tribe of Israel. That is a constitutional, gazetted, health ministry declaration over a nation. The Ministry of Health basically has declared this over this nation as a future thing that, that it has never changed. And so we find in this that there are a number of points that I want to bring to you. And here is how you are healed and how you can walk in health. So it's not just a moment, it's the momentum of what God has done here. Because they continued for 40 years. And, and you know, diseases and, and stuff never came upon them. Their clothes never wore out. There was a phenomenal uh, condition of maintenance that has never been eclipsed or changed or overcome in the history of the world. For 40 years, a, tr a whole nation walked in absolute health. That is phenomenal. It has happened once, it can happen again. Why? Because Hebrews 13, he is the same yesterday, he is the same today and forever. Why do you listen to this? You can be healed. Because if you take this for yourself, it is true. I am the Lord your healer now, as you was then. So, first one, if, if you will diligently listen. I love that word if, because it's like a condition. So, it, it's if. It's up to you. It's your choice. And I know when Jesus healed the sick, it was always when he saw their faith. He says, according to your faith. Your faith has. And so, faith is one of the keys to unlocking the supernatural upon your life. If you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God, number one, if you will diligently listen. Sometimes we listen to the word of God, to the preachers and the pulpits, and we take it as a ho-hum attitude. Well, you're going to get a ho-hum result when you walk out. It's when you diligently listen and say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, that's right. I know if who, Kia or who, John or Fred or whoever's preaching, uh, whoever does it, if you take that word as truth as yes, Lord, it's from you, you've been speaking to me, then you are diligently listening. Because sometimes we casually hear. Number two, to the voice of the Lord your God. Is he your Lord? Is he your God? Or is he one of many other dynamics that you're listening to? Are you listening too much to Dr. Google or so-and-so on their series on whatever to justify that healing doesn't happen today or died out with the apostles or that God never loves you and it's just a fallacy of the past? Or is he teaching you something to, te to put healing upon you because he wants to show you a revelation, which is an absolute lie from the pit of hell, because my father would never punish me to try and get my attention. He would love me, and I, he's got my immediate response. If you're listening to the voice of the Lord your God, number three, and do which is right in his eyes, you can do right in your eyes, Aunt Sophie's eyes, and Uncle Ben's eyes, or you can do right in his eyes, or your denomination's eyes. No, it's in his eyes. And give ear to his commandments or his rules. And there are rules to sin. Law, when law is, is not around, sin doesn't stand up and say, that's me, because law describes what sin is. Law is like, hey guys, don't do that because it's not helpful. Law is needed. So that we can define what sin is. When law comes, truth is illuminated and highlighted. So you do you give ear to his commandments. Listen to what's wrong and what's right. And keep all the statutes. Statutes is the way of life. And some people abuse the way of life. Quite honestly, they, they, they just don't want to sleep. They eat the wrong food. They are anxious and stressful, listening to the wrong stuff on Facebook and all the rest of it. And get all anxious and worked up and stuff. And as a result of that, the statutes of life are violated. And guess what? It causes you to become sick. And he says, I'll permit none of these diseases that are permitted on the Egyptians. So a lot of people in verse number six there, not verse number six, but point number six, and say, you see, God gives disease. No, he doesn't. He says, I'll permit them. You see, because here he says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And you say, well, how come you allowed this? Well, here's the truth. Let's take a little umbrella. If you under the umbrella, rain will not touch you. It may be raining all around, or the light may be shining down, but you are in the shadow of the sun being protected. So light does not hit you. Rain does not hit you because you are following and under his word. His word is the authority over you. What you submit to, you become. 
when you when you have authority of another one over you, you get the benefits of what that authority gives you. So if you are outside of what these words are in the Bible, then you are outside his protection. So when you're inside his protection, he can protect you. When you follow these things, he said, if you will do these, if you will listen, obey, pay attention to, then I am the Lord your healer. If not, then I'm not the Lord your healer. Psalm 91 says this. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'll say of the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress in God in whom I will trust. Surely he has delivered you from the snare of the fowler, who's at the devil, and from the perilous pestilence, COVID-19, whatever that is. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings he'll take refuge and truth shall be your shield and your buckler. How's that? Truth, truth. You shall not be afraid of the terror at night, number one, nor of the arrow that flies by day, number two, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, number three, nor of the destruction that lays wasted noon, radiation, nuclear warfare, number four. We used to say, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the AK bullet that flies in the surprise time. That's what we used to say back in the days when I was a soldier. So that's it. So, so th that is the truth around that word. And so here we find also 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober in spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Now, if you're not under the protection of the, of the Word of God, if you, if you are in the protection, guess what? The devil, like a roaring lion, is looking for someone. If you're under his shadow, you have no shadow. You have no profile. You are hidden. You cannot be found because you are hidden under God's Word. It is the canopy that's over you. But if you choose to be outside of that, guess what? You've got a shadow. You can be found. He's seeking whom he may, and then you can. He may be devoured. Then I'll not permit these diseases that are permitted on the Egyptians. So they walked outside. They didn't obey. They didn't follow the miraculous. They didn't see the, the, the supernatural power of God. They rejected it as Pharaoh. Guess what? Bang. Pestilence and stuff came to them. And so, so we find in the Word of God in 1 Corinthians 15, 26, the great power of His Word upon us. And, and uh, John, Psalm 103, if I can just quickly flip through to there, because it, again, it's an echo into the New Testament, uh, sorry, in the Old Testament of His goodness that He has continually done. And He puts two things in place. And it's like a psalm David was singing about, hey, you remember Exodus 15? Remember how they walked out? Remember how good he was. And it says this, Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless the holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives you your sins? Yes. Who heals your diseases? Verse 3, two things. He heals and he forgives who redeems your life from destruction, and it goes on, who crowds you with loving kindness and tender mercies, and it goes on with that. So you see there in Psalm 103, there David put salvation and healing together. In John, sorry, in Mark chapter 2 verse 9, it says, Jesus speaking to the Pharisees on the side when the man came down through the roof at the feet of Jesus, he said, which is easier for me to say, your sins are forgiven you, or that you can pick up your mat and walk? He says, which two is easier for you to understand? Right there in front of the Pharisees, Jesus put virtually Psalm 103, Exodus 15, 20, what they had done through, um, 26, what they had walked through. Both had been put in the same sentence, same word, which lines up with 3 John 2. I pray and that you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. There you go. Healing, salvation. As your soul prospers in salvation, your body comes and receives healing. Both benefits of the cross.
So this is the end of what I wanted to share with you today. And I trust that it brings health and healing to you. And right now, whoever's in your room with you, you can lay hands on the sick. You lay your hands on those people. Believe God's word. Believe the gospel of God's word. It is the pill of life and salvation to you for, for now and forever. So do it. It will work. God bless you.